Hare Krishna. Recently, there has been some controversy over uh, the Israel scientists visiting temples before they successfully embarked on the Chandrayaan mission. And then they also visiting temples after the success of the mission. There are some people who criticize that these are scientists. Why are they being uh, religionists? Shouldn't the scientists be rational and secular? We will analyze how science and spirituality can go together and indeed need to go together and we'll see how this is and be also understood from the Bhagavad Gita's perspective. So I'll talk about four points using the acronym FINE, F-I-N-E. F is foundation. Science operates on the foundation that the universe is orderly. That things don't happen in a completely random or unpredictable way. So Paul Davies, prominent contemporary scientist and science writer has said that scientists operate primarily on the almost theistic-like belief that there is a God who has ordered the universe. The point is that if there were no ordering principle in the universe, then anything could happen anytime. And Newton saw the apple fall on his head, felt it fall on his head. He tried to find out, okay, what made the apple fall? And he tried to come up with a mechanism, which was gravity. And coming up with that mechanism, coming up with the understanding of that mechanism was definitely his brilliance. But if the universe were operating randomly, then, okay, that mechanism would work today, would stop working tomorrow. So science operates on the foundational understanding that cause effect are correlated, connected by some organizing principle. This is what science eventually calls the laws of nature. So now whether God exists or not is a different question. But the very idea that cause effect should be connected, which is foundational for any scientific research to be possible requires the idea of how did this cause effect connection come about so that and that the most logical explanation for that is that there is an organizing principle which brought about the cause effect connection so that is why when newton did his scientific discoveries he famously said that oh father i think thy thoughts after thee for him it was his foundational understanding that the universe is orderly, having been done so by an organizing divinity, that led him to explore the universe and try to understand how it worked. So some people say, if you are if you are religious, if you are, if you believe in God, then you just expect accept God did everything, and then you won't have the scientific spirit. Actually, it is the opposite. It is because we understand that God has organized things in a particular way that we get the motivation to explore how has this come about. Uh, if we are going to look at some ancient script, uh, what looks like an ancient script? Now, if we think it is just some scrawl, some gibberish which some child has done, and there is no meaning in it, some random line here, some random line there, this, that, then we won't spend any time, we won't be motivated to spend any time to try to decipher that script. So, the, so similarly, if we consider that the working of the universe is like the writing of a script. Now, when we try to decipher it, we presume that there is something to be deciphered. It's not just random scrolls. So similarly, the very idea that there is a, that we are looking for understanding how the universe works requires the foundational assumption that there is an organizing principle in the universe. So if you look at the history of science as it evolved in the Western world, there is the foundational universal understanding that almost all scientists were and they saw that scientific research 
as profoundly a spiritual inquisitiveness. And that, that brings us to the next point, I, I is inspiration. When we try to explore science, at that time, science operates rationally. But many times, understanding itself does not come rationally. It is It comes by inspiration. There may be 10 steps we come to rationally, but then the answer lies at the 100th step. And how we jump from the 10th to the 100th step, that's an immense cognitive leap. It's almost as if something from within has planted the answer for us. And it may take years or decades for the subsequent 90 steps to be revealed. But intuitively, one has, this is the answer. And if we try out an experiment, the answer works. Many of Gauss' theorems, which he founded in the study of math and electricity, mathematical formulation of electricity, he got by inspiration and he credited, credited it to God. And it took mathematicians and scientists many decades long after his death to actually come up with a logical step-by-step -step proof for his laws. Similarly, Srinivas Ramanujan, India's own astonishing scientist, he said that he got his scientific ins insights by the blessing of divinity. So the divine can be a source of inspiration. And inspiration itself does not have a rational explanation. So science looks for rational explanations of things, and yet the rational explanations don't themselves have a rational explanation. How we come up with rational explanations is sometimes more by inspiration than, ra than simply rational step-by-step -step analysis. So even Einstein said that the rational mind is a servant. Actually, it is the inspiration, the creative mind, it is the intuition, the different words that are used, which actually lead to major breakthroughs in science. Then third point is N, non-interference. It means that just because somebody is uh, having a spiritual inclination, somebody has some personal uh, religious practices, like in this case, going to a temple, that does not in any way impede their scientific competence. There is this stereotype, stereotypical idea, which is almost a caricature, that those who believe in God don't look for rational explanations. They just attribute everything to God. No, things have multiple levels of explanations. And so we could say one point, one circle around it, another circle around it, here another circle around it. So Newton accepted that God was the ultimate organizing principle of everything. But when the apple fell on him, he was not looking for the explanation how, no, oh, God made it. Okay, God made it happen, but how did God make it happen? That was his question. And for that, he was looking for a mechanism. So there is a mechanical explanation and there is a the theistic devotional explanation. And these two don't interfere with each other. The Bhagavad Gita also talks about this in the 13th chapter, 21st verse, when it states, Karya Karana Kartrutve, Hetu Prakritruchate. So he says, it says that karya karana kartrute, the cause effect connection between things, hetu it is the material nature that is the reason, the driving force for this cause effect connection. Now, how one cause, when it leads to a particular effect, how it impacts us, whether we experience joy, whether we experience sorrow. That depends on how our consciousness is invested. The previous Chandrayaan, when it crash landed, we experienced heartbreak. And when it landed now, it was thrill, it was euphoria. So now both, when the Chandrayaan succeeded and succeeded, there were laws of physics, laws of gravity that were operating. And the scientists who are working, there is this clear understanding of the separation of the two domains. That the one science, science, the scientific inclinations don't impede one, one spiritual inclinations don't impede one scientific outlook or scientific rigor, neither rigor nor rigor. And that brings us to the last part that is E. E is empowerment. Leave alone, not 
causing any interference actually a spiritual outlook can empower a human being to serve more science is not just about investigating about exploring and understanding ultimately we want to use what we have explored for the good of humanity so the empowerment that comes from one spirituality can be two ways one is that the empowerment comes in terms of the ability as i talked about the inspiration earlier the confidence that there is organizing principle in the universe but the empowerment can come also in the form of a set of guiding values and principles which can ensure that science when it is used especially used not just to understand the universe but to tap its mechanisms through technology that it will be used properly that whether it is scientists in particular or scientifically minded people in general through scientific developments of technology we humans have got enormous power nowadays and for this power to be used constructively we need higher values that inner empowerment carl jung said that the more outer power we have the more inner power we need at martin luther king famously said that our scientific power has outrun our spiritual power we have guided missiles and misguided men so we get power externally but we need inner power inner wisdom and inner will power to be able to use the outer power given by technology properly so the scientists of isro by first of all on one side doing an extraordinary accomplishment of in terms of technological achievement and then not having any fear or uh, reservation about about expressing their own personal spirituality have set an excellent example for india and for all of humanity that science and spirituality do not have to be divorced that they can both go together to empower us as holistic human beings for changing things for the better science through its capacities of controlling the outer world by technological advancement can can make the outer world better science can make things better spirituality by its capacity to provide values and principles can change the inner world science spirituality can make people better in this way it's science making the outer world better it's spirituality making the inner world better we all can contribute towards making both making our contribution holistically in progressing towards a better world thank you hari krishna